Hi guys, Joshua Peterson with Peterson Electric here doing another video for you. Uh, try to do one a week and today is going to be our RV. This is Don, our, our uh, good customer. We've known him for oh, about four years now and um, we've been out to his house many a times in his church doing some work. But uh, I'll let Don uh, give you the rundown about his RV. So good morning to you. So we have our RV but we needed needed it hooked up to 30 amp service. So Josh here came right out and is hooking it up. So we have our RV and we tow our little smart car. So and the, what class is that, just so we know? It's a Class C. Okay. It's a Winnebago Twin Class C. So. And, and then in, in here, um, Don gave us this, which this is so needed, guys. We need to know what we're hooking up and how much. Unit six, I think it was. In six. Yeah. But yeah, it talks about in the electrical that it's a 110 hookup. And um, we were a little concerned about that, just making sure it's not 240. So let me show you in here. This is a just a 10-3 wire. You can do it in a 10-2, the ground they don't count. But I don't ever carry 10-2 because we use it for well pumps and RVs. So I do everything, cooktops, um, wall ovens, um, dryers, you, you name it, is all 10-3. So I just, what I did is I capped the red, okay, and then I put the white on the neutral in here and the, uh, the bare ground on the, this side of this bus bar here is a bare ground. These two in this panel are not tied together because there's a first point of disconnect um, also at the end of the driveway. So you're supposed to keep your neutral and ground separated there. Um, and then we have a 30 amp single pole, which we only use this for wells and RVs. We very seldom do we carry a 30 amp single pole um, plug right there. So yeah, we just put it in the panel. His, his drywall is not on and they're not going to put it in. So it was very open and easy to deal with. And um, normally if you're gonna drill through your studs, you can do that, but you have to drywall immediately is pretty much what they want you to. So that way the wire's not damaged. If you're not gonna drywall, like Don said, he's not gonna insulate a drywall. We just ran it up above the studs and then we came down over here. So um, just stapled it next to the stud really tight out here is your RV connection. So you can get these boxes. Again, you're gonna cap the red, okay? And then here's the most important thing. You've got to know which side is your neutral, which side's your hot. So I went inside of the RV, opened up the J box, and I traced out the circuit. Um, basically, I was able to ohm out this side is the neutral, this is the hot, this is the ground. And your connection cord, I'll show you on this one. It'll be in here, in a doghouse. And in here, there's a neutral hot and a ground. And you just have to make sure you're hooking up which side is right. If you don't, you will wreck your RV. Um, and also you have to be attentive that some of your class C and B's, if you get up to your B and your A, or a toy hauler, or even the older fifth wheel style with no toy hauler, if you start getting a, a few uh, ACs, like a triple axle toy hauler will have three ACs, those can require 60 amps. If you're doing a double axle toy hauler like we have, a fifth wheel um, toy hauler, 32 foot, that requires a 50 amp. Now that's if you're running your AC. We have gotten away with just a 110 plug um, that charges the battery, gets the TVs going, and that's really it in the microwave. But when you're trying to run many items at once, um, you know, you've got to know if you have those adapters as well to change that. So when we went to our, um, our little getaway up at Blue Mesa, all theirs were rated at 30 amp hookup. But they didn't have a 50 amp four prong. This is a dryer, or excuse me, an oven cord or a range cord, basically. Uh, it's, a, it's a straight right here on this L part. There's no L. So that's a 50 amp four wire. Um, 
This is your adapter that will adapt down to your 110. And if you trace it through, um, this side still will stay as your neutral as your longer one and your shorter one's your hot. So as this traces through, it still goes out to its neutral right here. You don't have to worry about it crossing. Because really what they do is they jumper the two hots as a 110. And that's this is already configured with the RV, so you don't have to worry about that. But then this can also adapt you to go from 110 in the wall to your 30 amp connection if you're trying to connect to a 30 amp, which is up here. So this could get you by at, at your house to charge. And this is probably what, what Don had to do, but he had to adapt this. And then he plugged 110. But mind you, just because you plugged in, this circuit most likely is tied to other outlets in the house, especially if it's the front outside circuit. It'll be tied to the back plug. It'll be tied to your basement plug. So that circuit may travel through the home with other intentions. Uh, it could be off of your freezer or um, your refrigerator in the garage. And when you're going to trickle charge or charge it, you may end up popping the breaker or the GFCI and then now you've lost a lot of food and it's spoiled. So this is what we suggest is no make sure you have a manual if you're buying it used if you don't have a manual boy you're you're going to be subject to your own responsibility on that um but that manual really helps us to know what to do and how to do it and then we trace out making sure that it's plugged up correctly and it fits in this little simple rv box it does not have to be gfci'd um you can surge protect it if you choose to We can sell a surge protector that goes on the bus bar in here. And then that will help protect the RV as well. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining us.